Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I am finally back with another channeled video. Now I'm going to say the date, this is July 30th of 2024. So I'll put that in the tape besides just putting it online. So there's no confusion about what day this, this is being taped. So how I came to do this video, this is a very unusual one because I'm going to illustrate how spirit works to get somebody like me who can pick up on energy to focus on a person's particular energy, especially when they're not wanting to focus on that person. So I was sitting here just minding my own business and I started to think of my son, Keith. This is a few weeks back. I've been trying to do this video and this is my seventh attempt at this video. Anyway, I was sitting here. This is my new studio. I was sitting here and I was thinking of Keith and Keith went to school with some kids in Los Angeles that formed a hip hop group called Shoreline Mafia. Some of you probably know who this group is. One of the kids went to school with my son and my son was always talking about them, you know, interested, they were friends. And I think one of them was a good basketball player, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but I just remember conversations like this. Anyway, Keithy told me before he passed that one of the associates of Shoreline Mafia had been gunned down in Los Angeles. And I was like, he was 23 and I was like, that's disgusting. Now this popped into my head this year, this month. Well, actually in probably around middle of June, end of June, popped into my head as I'm sitting here, look up that kid, look up that kid that Keith was talking about in Los Angeles. So I Google associate shot Shoreline Mafia and this kid pops up and his name is Mac P Dog. Very interesting. That's his handle. So I'm looking, he was gunned down about 8 p.m. April 6th and no one, thus far nothing's happened to him or, I mean, no one knows what happened. So as I'm thinking about that, I'm beginning to see the feed on the side of my computer and it's popping up that Julio Fulio's been shot on June 23rd in Tampa, Florida of this year gunned down at his own birthday party, even though it was two days after his birth, because he was born on June 21st of 1998. So I'm like, wait, so you see how I start focusing it randomly popped into my head, that kid, I start focusing that way. And then because I'm doing that, I'm shown this. So I start to focus on Julio Fulio, whose real name is Charles Jones. And as I said, he was born on June 21st of 1998. Now, the interesting thing about him, I immediately look for his chart. That's a given with me. I'm always going to look for your chart. I have no reference. There is no, there isn't really a good reference online, not even a close one, not even a consistent one. So I would put sun on the ascendant for that. So I would do a 6 a.m. chart for anybody who doesn't have a birth time, like an adopted person, a person born like way back in the day in a third world country where they didn't log the date, right? So I would do this. And we do a thing called rectification in a chart where you go back to primary events in childhood, like the death of a parent, the death of a relative, a, a major move, an illness, and you kind of work backwards through the chart to figure out what time they're born. That's a whole lot of work and I don't have that kind of time. So I just was looking at his face and I, I was listening to him speak and he himself says he's a Gemini. But here's the interesting thing. He's got one of those precarious birthdays where the sun is moving from Gemini to Cancer on that day. So morning birth, last degrees of Gemini, Afternoon birth, first degrees of cancer. And in his particular instance, the moon on the day he was born was 29 degree Taurus moon, but at 5.50 p.m., if he was born anytime after five, the moon is moving into the sign of Gemini. So I'm like, is he Gemini or is he cancer? I'm assuming he probably knows what time he was born, but I don't have anyone to confirm it with me. So I said, as I'm looking at his face, I'm seeing very Piscean around the mouth. Like literally it's reminding me of Pisces. So I'm like, does he have Neptune in the first? Is he a Pisces rising? Is he a Cancer sun in a Pisces degree called a Deccan? What, what is he? Okay, what, what is he? This is driving me really crazy. So I'm looking at him and I'm like, he's got an intensity that is different than full on Gemini. Like it's very unearthing the undercurrent. And then immediately I'm pushed into when he's passing out of his body and I'm seeing him kind of being, the image I'm seeing is him going with a bunch of gargoyles around him, literally securing his environment. Now this is energetic environment, not physical environment because he's leaving 
the physical at this time. So they are securing him on an energetic level. And that is the wording I heard, securing him. And I'm like, securing him from what? Then they start to show me that he is and has been using his own skill to protect himself from the energy that was being thrown at him. Now you're like, what energy? He very much came from a family of origin that understood magic, ritual, intention, um, conjuring, and we're going voodoo, hoodoo, black magic. Okay, so we're going along those lines of thinking. And he was blocking his energy from people trying to unblock it and take it. This is really going on around him. So in his physical body is a spiritual side to himself. And that spiritual side to himself does not want to be controlled. So he is taking measure from himself. It's like a turf war going on for his vibrational energy. He is blocking and he is offensively or defensively, whichever it is, pushing them away and they are throwing it at him. Now he's telling me, and I want you to hear this, I'm not gone, I'm not gone. So he has not crossed out. He was immediately protected in order to observe. He was unaware of who and where it was coming from. So he is being shown. Now, I don't know what time frame that takes. I have no idea when they do this. I don't know if they pop back in, pop out. I don't know how that really works. There's so much to know, but it's different for every person. But he is looking at the environment he came from. And I'm hearing to say that his mother, this is his mother, is very much acquainted with the person who ordered the hit on him. She is unaware of it. This has nothing to do with her. She is familiar with this person and thinks that they are a good person and that they are helpful to the family. But they are really a turncoat and a Benedict Arnold within the family. They are working from behind the scenes in order to acquire what he was doing. And then I'm given a big stop and I'm shown that they took him out. So this is a hit. They took him out because they wanted to change the music tempo right now, this year, from the type of music he did. And he was unwilling to start performing in the way that they wanted him to perform. He was an artist. He wanted to do it the way he wanted to do it. So he was unwilling to change the way that he did things. And they did not want that. So my guess is there is a whole bunch of music, words, rap. It's drill rap, which is another interesting concept. It's a lot different. It's a another level of rap. So it's a more raw, violent type of rap where they the artists speak about their environment in the truest sense. It's not just money and sex and drugs. It's murder and rape and pillaging, but it's what they grow up around. So I appreciate the freedom that they have to speak about what they're doing, but it's also very combative. In other words, this drill rapper will have a beef with that drill rapper and they will beef it back and forth like a gang war, like a turf war. I keep wanting to use the word turf war, but it's a turf war for vibration and frequency, not possessions on earth. It's very strange. That's why a lot of his rapping was done in the graveyard. Now, this is something they do. I'm also, when I looked, I looked and I'm like, why are you going into the graveyard? I know it's a thing. I know it's what they do. He didn't really like doing that after maybe the last couple of times because he's, he's showing me that somebody was throwing the bones. They're throwing the bones. And when I see throwing the bones, I immediately go to spell casting, throwing the bones. Okay. Like this is something that actually people do do. And you guys are more familiar with it. People in that voodoo, who do, they probably understand it. Even Santa Maria, they probably understand it way more than I do, but that's what I'm being shown. And I'm hearing, I didn't like what they did to the bones. So I'm almost feeling like somebody stole somebody's corpse or bones from a graveyard and took it somewhere else. That's what I'm feeling. I'm not thinking now that it is some sort of magic reference. I'm thinking literally they took the bones and he didn't like that. 
He was so completely open that he had a lot of attachments to him from the music that he was doing. It is the frequency. It is so open-ended frequency. It is so open-ended for them when they get to that level that they have a hard time pushing those entities out and their personality changes. This is why I feel he carried so much depression with him. You can see it. It kind of melds off him. On the other side, he's very different. He's very funny and he's a lot of fun, okay? Like there's a lightness to him on the other side and a seriousness. On this side, I didn't necessarily see the lightness. I saw the bravado. What I saw around him is I saw the bravado. I saw the feeling of presenting himself like he was okay, but there was like a complex post-traumatic stress around him and there was a lot of sadness there was an abandonment with him like everybody has abandoned me i heard him say that everybody has abandoned me he could not believe what was going on around him didn't really expect to die that night so they did catch him off guard and he says damn rat it out rat it out rat it out so somebody knew i mean i heard that he put publicly where his birthday was going to be or they went from here to here and that's a bit unfortunate okay look at that look at that we go on blurry again always going blurry can you see that <sighs> okay let's see if we can get it back <laughs> i have to go up it drives me crazy okay we're back sometimes it happens and people say it's the settings on the camera i'm like it's not the settings on the camera it just happens sometimes it's super annoying so what i'm seeing with him is he was ratted out but it's deeper than that so let's go back to the beginning the first thing is his energy was being hijacked by multiple attachments to him things that he was unaware of they were constantly talking in his head he would think probably he was going crazy, but he was hearing a lot of outside noise and influence. And he was trying to kind of shut that down. He was also not wanting to continue with his career. He was actually wanting to take it in a different direction himself, but not the direction that management wanted him to take. There's a vast difference in what he was doing and where he wanted to go between what his either record, record label management, I don't know what he had, but any and or all of those, wanted him to go he was going to be the consciousness of how to change the direction of the frequency what i'm being shown is they bring about these types of music frequency it's frequency not necessarily the style of music it just happens to come through that style but they bring it about in order to corral groups of people that agree with that mindset and to keep them thinking over here versus expanding the way that they think it happens in all types of music, maybe not classical, but pretty much every other type of music. So certain people are, are, are tuned to that frequency. And he was wanting to change what he was doing because he was really tired from the bullshit. And he goes back like three, three and a half years, really tired. Like my eyes are getting heavy talking about it. I'm getting a headache on the back of my head. So he was very tired, okay? Not, not wanting to do this some bullshit, not wanting to do it, wanting to be a grown up, really. Wanting to open up his own label is what I'm hearing. I wanna open up my own label and I wanna have some artists working for me and I want them to be able to create, create like I was given a chance, I wanna give them a chance is what I'm hearing. He was trying to do this, but he was always like on guard with stuff. Now, here's where I go back to LA and that Mac P dog, okay? So I go all the way back to LA and I go, to that kid and here's what i'm going to say so just like don't come for me for this the hit on julio folio was garnered from los angeles a very high up rapper male everybody's praising him right now i'm not going to say the name but you can get it you will get it a very high up male rapper probably in his 50s everybody's paying attention to him right now this week okay and as i said it is july 30th of 2024 so that team of energy and that higher up rapper old school rapper is connected to his management team his record company his handlers whoever and the hit is ordered sideways ordered from los angeles going into florida using a bunch of patsies 
people who think they're beefing with Julio Fulio because of something else. So it gives them key to do it. But that's not the reason he died. He died for an entirely different reason. And it's coming from higher up because we couldn't control it. The other thing I was showing as I was seeing that, I was showing this is crazy. I, so I'm asking about this drill wrap coming out of Chicago, probably 2010-ish time frame, if not earlier, but really getting popular in 2010. So I'm like, what's with this? Because they really are doing West Side Story dancing, but in a very graphic way. Like it's two drill rappers going after each other. It's still doing this. It's till two drill rappers going after each other. This makes me nuts. Okay, there, we're back. It's two drill rappers going after each other, almost like West Side Story. Just think of it in terms of the dance and the, the, the choreographed fighting. Now look at the drill rappers and like, you do this to me, I do this to you. You kill this person, you dance on his grave, I do this, I etc. So it's, it's that kind of, again, turf war. Now go back to the early 1900s, and I'm being dead serious when I say this. Go back to the early 1900s, okay? Go all the way back. Go to the Teamsters, the Italian mob, the original mafia, the movie The Godfather. Go all the way back and ask yourself, those people all died and they were in that kind of frequency war to take over things, to control things, to control the tempo, pay people off. They had people everywhere, you know, extortion control, and they all died off. And so there's different kinds of mobs now, like, you know, the cartel, the whatever, the government, all of that. Now, those people, this is, this is what I was shown. Those people that were mobsters over here came back in the segment of people that we know as drill rappers. Some of them reincarnated. That's a crazy thing to say. And I know how crazy that sounds. But that's exactly what that is. That is why the violence is associated with it. And it's a way of trying to control things again. Our youth, our situations, our city. Now, why are they trying so quickly to find Julio Fulio's killer and not Mac P. Dog? These are both young men, different levels of success. But why? Why? They're both in the same community. So why are we so gung-ho over here? And over here, we're doing the typical LA thing and, you know, letting it slide, right? So is it East Coast, West Coast? What is it? Here's what it is. If I were a drill rapper named Julio Fulio, and I had information about, a, a, <laughs> it just went again. It's when they step in front and no, I'm not making it up. I, there, now I've come back. I just waved my hand and I've come back. All right, so Julio Fulio had information about a very famous upscale person in his industry and what they were doing. And it tied in three governmental agencies. So he was aware of some bullshit and there was a shakedown to get him to shut up. But here's what's interesting. The reason we're working so hard to tie this up with a bow, and even though you will get the right people and it's the girl that ratted them out, even though you will get the right people, you don't have the right people. It's coming from higher up and it's coming from the West Coast and it's hitting that coast. So if we are investigating something, hypothetical if, this is just not gonna stop. If we are investigating something, and, <laughs> I'm sorry you guys. Oh, so annoying. Okay. If we are investigating something and we are looking into a murder or death, and we are involved in it for different reasons of extortion and say trafficking, then we need to tie up loose ties quickly, arrest the people who think they did it of their own volition, but actually it was set into motion from above them. And one of the people that will be accused of the murder of him or for contributing in the murder of Julio Fulio will actually be the person that ratted the others out and was playing both sides of the team. And I believe it's a female and she's playing both sides. So she won't really do the same kind of time. And if we tie this up quickly and everybody's satisfied, we wipe our hands, satisfied that we got somebody 
then the real person that orchestrated it gets off scot-free because nobody goes back to them. So what happens? We give a whole bunch of money over here to the establishment that's looking into the murder. And then we continue on over here and no one is the wiser. But here's the thing, and I guarantee you of this, Julio Fulio's mother is going to come across information in the form of written document that ties his murder. Oh my God, do you see that? That ties, do you, do you see that? That ties his murder. Okay, now it's weird. The I camera heard. just cut off. I heard the name Grant. So ties his murder, okay, to somebody higher up in the rap, hip hop, drill rap industry. And the person it ties it to is actually out there very public. So there's a mass takeover in that industry. It involves the police, it involves the government, it involves everything. That's why this person is being showcased and representing America. That's why this is happening. So the mother of Julio Fulio is going to come across this information. It's probably early spring of next year, and it's going to shock the shit out of people. And then there will be a slow reference to what this person has done, but people will sweep it under the rug because that's what they do. They never want to pull it out. This person is too powerful. And it's interesting. It's very interesting, but it's all happening. So there's hits going out, but they're really coming from the top of the rap industry and the people that run the money out of there. And there's a concerted effort in the next four years, hear me with this, to take the rap industry, the music and the type of rap that people do in an entirely different direction. So pretty much the way we know rap is not gonna be out rap, hip hop or drill rap or whichever it is, is not gonna be the frequency they use. So there's a huge pushing. So all of, and this, I'm being serious, all of the opponents of Julio Fulio or the people he beefs with, those people will also no longer be participating in this type of music. Some will go along with the change and others will back off and go elsewhere and some will end up in the same fate. This is kind of an obvious thing, but it's really about a takeover of the energy. So that's what I'm seeing. And Julio Fulio is like right there. He's not gone anywhere. He is literally right there. And his sense of humor is such that he enjoys popping up and popping in on people. Okay? Popping up and popping in. He's a funny kid. Look, this is going crazy again. Oh my God, so annoying. Anyway, he is a very funny kid. He is a unique kid, an interesting kid, a funny kid. He's talking about somebody coming into his house or where he lived and trying to drown him. I don't, I, I don't, I just got that as that, as the camera went blurry, that just popped into my head. Somebody getting into his house, and I, I think it was in the last, it might have been the last two months but trying to drown him. I don't know if they're pushing his head in the bathtub, in the sink, in the toilet, but trying to drown him is what I'm hearing. So they were trying to threaten him with something before this happened, and he wasn't gonna fall for it. See, he wasn't going to fall for it. That's what I'm getting. Oh my God, I'm really not. Look at that, look at that shit. Look, look, you guys, they play with it. Look, yes, you're here, I got it. That's cool. I know there's some... <laughs> <laughs> He's not stopping. I'm look, I'm still sitting here. That look at that. Okay, totally okay. Hilarious. Look, look. It is crazy. He's literally right here, stepping back and forth in front of the camera. He actually <laughs> super funny. He did not okay. Sorry, I have to go back over here. This is the silliest video. I have so tried to make this video and I can't get my face unblocked. So funny. But he has, tr okay, we're trying one more time. Come on, okay, there. You guys are gonna be, this is the weirdest video. But 
He's telling me someone trying to drown him. He didn't like it when I said that, but I'm saying it. Somebody was trying to drown him. So he was literally being bullied and he had to put that pretense up. That's part of the type of music he does. It's not shocking. It's what they do. It's shocking to us, but for them, it's how they communicate. And that's what he was, was a communicator. Super smart and kind of funny behind the scenes, making me laugh. So Julio Fulio, this, we're not done with this. We're going to find a... I'm just going to say it. Big, tall, skinny rapper in his 50s could be 60. I don't know. I don't know how old people are. Anyway, way back to when I was a kid, rapper who ordered the hit on this young rapper. And the music company, the manager, the music, the songs, the writing, they tried to drown him. They tried to misdirect him. And that was the problem. He wouldn't go along with it. He was very paranoid. And he was constantly being ratted up, out. But you have no idea. And he still like around everybody in his day-to-day -day life. And it's been really shocking for him to hear the conversations. Like he's like, there's a part that's funny and a part that he's walking in on. And he's like, holy shit. <laughs> like what? <laughs> he's just like, whoa. And these are people that were very, very close to him. Okay. These were his right hand people. And so he can hear you. Don't think he can't. And that's why you feel like he's listening to you and you're freaked out. And now you're taking more drugs because he knows what you said. I'm not saying that. He's saying that. Okay, you guys, this is my first video on the rapper Julio Fulio. And I'm putting it out there. This is like eight times seven or eight times seven or eight. And I'm going to tie it to Los Angeles as well. I'm going to tie it to that. And just say wait and see because that's what I'm tying it to. But I have to put it up with all the stupid like energy bloopers in this. Anyway, once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.